On today's show, I'll be teaching you one of the most odd acoustic guitar techniques in existence. One of the most seemingly difficult ways to play the acoustic guitar. However, it's actually pretty easy. On today's show, I'll be breaking down and teaching you two hand tapping on the acoustic guitar. So you can see that it's far more than a novelty party trick and actually a very useful way to fuel your creativity and explore the acoustic guitar. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 250 of the Acoustic Tuesday show. This show is designed to inject your guitar journey with a weekly dose of fun, focus, progress, and inspiration. Today you'll be learning one of the best tricks I've ever heard to make sure that your guitar routine is as consistent as it can be and bulletproof from distraction. You're gonna be learning this trick from TAC family member Mary G, who has 10 kids, two of which still live at home, and she maintains a regular guitar routine, as regular as the rising and setting of the sun. You'll hear what she has to say a little bit later, and of course you're gonna see what the TAC family is working on today. It's a guitar lick entitled Trampoline Accident. And of course your weekly dose of acoustic news awaits, which includes polarizing guitars, an all-star duo guitar jam, the bug guitar, and much, much more. But first go ahead and grab your guitar, open your mind, reserve judgment, and let's learn two-hand tapping. So we'll take this step by step, and the first step is going to be to tune your guitar to an open tuning. For all of the examples today, I'll be using open D major tuning. That means you'll take your low E string, tune it down to a D. Your A string stays the same. Your D string stays the same. The G string drops to an F sharp string or an F sharp note, I should say. Uh, your B string drops to an A and your high E string drops to a D. So you have D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. And you can tell as I strum those, that creates a wonderful, beautiful D major chord. And this open tuning will allow a little bit more forgiveness when you start trying these new techniques, because if you accidentally hit a string, it's okay, because it's in harmony with this full chord and the notes that you'll be playing. And speaking of the notes that you'll be playing, that's the other thing I wanna go over quick, uh, uh, quickly here, is that you know we have the tuning, but I want you to have a, a couple of pieces of the pie at your disposal already, i.e. some chords. So what we're gonna do is look at two different variations of chords. Uh, the first variation is gonna be between the A and the F sharp string, okay? And what you're gonna do for this first chord shape is position your middle finger on the second fret of the A and your index finger the first fret of the F sharp string. That'll sound like this. Then you're gonna take that same exact shape, slide it towards the body two frets. Okay, so your middle finger ends up on the fourth fret of the A string and your index finger on the third fret of the F sharp string. And then for a final chord shape, we're gonna stack both the middle and the ring finger on the fifth fret. Uh, middle finger, fifth fret of the A string, ring finger, fifth fret of the F sharp string. Pretty great sounding chords. What are the names of those chords? Don't worry about it right now. I just want you to have these, these fretted shapes to use so you can try the technique. We're just focusing on one thing here and that is the technique, but I want you to be able to play some different things with it, hence these shapes. Okay, the next chord shapes that we're gonna look at are the chord shapes on the higher strings. It's gonna be the F sharp string and the high D string, okay? So, for your first chord shape, your index finger will be on the first fret of the F sharp string, ring finger on the second fret of the high D string. It's really just a mirror image of what you did on the lower strings. Take that exact shape, slide it up two frets, index finger, third fret of the F sharp string, middle finger or ring finger on the second fret of that high D string. Uh, you can use, of course, your middle finger. Sometimes I find it more comfortable to use my ring finger, but I do interchange them. So in some of these examples, you may see me use the middle finger. If that's completely okay, just find a set of fingers that is comfortable for you. And then that final shape, we're gonna use our middle finger on the fifth fret of the F sharp string and our ring finger on the fifth fret of the D string. Okay, let me go 
over those positions real quick. We have open, first position, second position, third position. Same is true on the lower strings. Okay, so step two is to use your fretting hand to sustain a chord. And the way that you're gonna do this is through hammer-ons. So let's go ahead and take that very first lower chord shape, uh, second fret of the A string, first fret of the F sharp string. And if I strum it, eventually that chord is gonna ring out and there will be silence. Well, when we're using two hand tapping, we don't necessarily have the ability to strum. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is maintain a series of hammer-ons. Uh, think of it as pulsing hammer-ons to make that chord sound like it sustains forever. That would sound like this. Okay, as you'll see, as I'm doing this, a couple technique notes is I'm, I'm landing on the strings with some force. Okay, and this takes time to develop. Okay, so don't feel like you, got, you can get this right out of the box. You've got to take time to develop the strength so that you can come down with confidence right in the sweet spot of the fret, right next to the fret so you get good sound. Once you get that hammer on aspect, we're gonna then pull off. And when you pull off, you wanna pull slightly down on the strings so that they kind of fling off the end of your finger. That allows you to keep the strings vibrating. It, it gives you this quote unquote infinite sustain. So what I want you to do right now is go ahead and try this over that first chord. It'll sound like this. Move to that second chord. And move to that final chord shape, the quote unquote stacked chord shape. So that is a fretting hand technique that you will use. And you're thinking to yourself, tone, two hand tapping. I'm going to use both hands. Yes, you are gonna use both hands, but we have to layer on the techniques. Otherwise, it's too intimidating. Otherwise, it seems like there's too many pieces happening at once. So we're just gonna take a single piece at a time so you can really get this under your fingers and start messing with it. Okay, so that's what we'll call the fretting hand under, okay? We're using our fretting hand under the, the, uh, the neck of the guitar and hammering on and pulling off to maintain the sound of a chord. Well, we can have the fretting hand go over as well. And that's step number three or item number three. Uh, and all we're doing on this is using our fretting hand over the neck and doing the same exact thing. So I want you to work on those higher co uh, chord shapes we used on the higher strings, the F sharp and the high D string, okay? And we'll just use those two for now. And what I want you to do is the same exact thing, but over the neck. So you're gonna maintain this hammer on and pull off sequence. It'll sound like this. A little bit odd. This is probably the most odd technique that I'll go over today, I think. Actually, there's a couple more odd ones coming up. But for this, it's the same exact mechanics. It's the same exact mechanics. You're hammering on with force to generate sound and vibration in the strings, and you're pulling off by pulling the strings to the side a little bit, allowing them to fling off the end of your fingers. That keeps the vibration of the string going. Over the neck, will take longer to get under your fingers than under the neck. And also a disclaimer, over the neck, the accuracy is much harder. Why? Because you're, you're likely not used to fretting the strings by reaching over the neck or over the other strings as well. So, a couple of technique points here. You want your thumb on the back of the guitar neck. Uh, I use that as a wonderful anchor point. And then I also use kind of the heel of the palm of my hand on the neck of the guitar as well. This gives me a nice solid surface so I can really focus on hammering on and pulling off with accuracy and a little bit of force to make sure the strings are vibrating. 
Okay, so that is the fretting hand. Let's go ahead and move on to the picking hand. It hasn't done anything so far. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is look at single fretted notes with the picking hand. Now I'm isolating just a single note because there's a couple of technique elements I want to go over. And that is uh, gripping the neck with your picking hand, which is now gonna become a fretting hand. So I want you to take your thumb and your pinky or ring finger and put them on the sides of the neck, the sides of the fingerboard, okay? Almost like your, uh, your hand is a koala bear of sorts and it's quote unquote legs are wrapping around the neck of the guitar. <laughs> That's the only thing I could think of. <laughs> um, and what you're gonna do is take your index finger and hammer on to the fifth fret of that low D string, like so. That's it. Now I say that's it. Your picking hand is likely not used to fretting. And that's exactly what it's doing right here. So this will take time to develop as well. You wanna come down with a little bit of force. You wanna come down with accuracy so you get a good sound, okay? And what you're doing is using your gripping fingers, the thumb and the pinky and ring finger to kind of create a nice solid, almost like a fulcrum that you can lean into and get some force when you hammer onto the string. And I want you to do this. You could do this on the fourth fret. You can do it on the second fret, and you can try just a general pull off. Okay, so you're able to hammer on and then pull off. Again, we're pulling to the side a little bit, letting that string fling off, fling off the end of your finger. Okay, pretty cool. So we've looked at the fretting hand. We've looked at the picking hand, and we're doing two-hand tapping, so step number five I think we're on is to combine the two into single string lines where we're using both hands. We're gonna use our actual fretting hand and our picking hand, and I'm gonna start you off on the low string here. The low D string, I want you to hammer on to the fifth fret, fret the fourth fret with your, uh, your fretting hand, Pull off the fifth fret with your picking hand. Pull off the fourth fret with your fretting hand. Okay, so it's hammer on with your picking hand. Pull off with your picking hand to the fourth fret using your fretting hand, and then pull off with your fretting hand to the open string. Now, I'm gonna do this in succession. It's really hard to describe this, but I think it's actually easier to see it. So you can get it under your fingers and just practice this single note line. It's easier to do it on the bass strings. We have a, a larger string to work with and you generally get more sound out of the larger string. So it's a great starting point. So again, it's gonna be five, four, open. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat this so you can kind of find the groove and, and maybe even play along with me if you have your guitar out. Sounds like this. That's the beauty of the open strings. If you run into them, they sound good, or rather the beauty of the open tuning. Now, you can play around with this on that low D string. I would recommend the fifth and fourth fret. It's fourth and second. Fifth and second. Seventh and second. Seventh and fifth. Right, just a different combination, but you're focusing on single note lines here. Okay, single note lines don't just have to live on the base end of the spectrum. We can do single note lines anywhere. Something that might sound like this. The mechanics are exactly the same. And all I'm doing here, I'll just, I'll, I'll just notate the frets for you or I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what I'm playing so you can maybe try this out for yourself. I'm doing seven and five on the A string, the high A string. I'm doing seven and five on the F sharp string. Five and four on the D string, the middle D string. Uh, four and two on the A string. And four and two on the low D string. 
always going to an open string just to kind of fill out some of that sustain so it's not so clunky, right? So I'll do that again so you can hear it. I'll do it a couple of times so you can kind of hear the, the effect that it has. The accuracy is difficult. As you can tell, um, it, it, it's very easy to hit a different string. So, that being the case, if, if as you're learning this, you have to tilt the guitar so you can see the strings, that's completely okay. You know, I think a lot of times it's this badge of honor to not look at the strings. Well, in this case, I want you to look at the strings. I want you to feel and see how it is to be accurate. And once you get used to the technique, then you won't have to look anymore. But right now, please look, tilt the guitar. This is a very odd technique and one that will take some time to get under your fingers. Okay, one more technique I wanna go over and then I'll show you how to combine a couple of these things. Step number six is the picking hand strum. Now check this out. When we do this picking hand strum, we'll also be fretting a bass note with our picking hand index finger. So if your hand is like this, how on earth are you supposed to strum? Well, what I do is I take my ring finger, right? So I'm gonna remove my ring and pinky from the bottom of the neck and I'm gonna strum with my ring finger. Sounds pretty cool. It gives you a nice full, well, strumming sound. Now, a great way to practice this is to hold down that very first chord shape that I showed you and hit that fifth fret of the low D string and then strum, like so. It's a great way to practice this. I have to, I have to continue to say this because I fall into this trap too. I wanna get things quick and when they sound icky or fuzzy or buzzy or not to my liking, I can get frustrated and ultimately chalk it up to, I don't like this technique. I want you to really give this technique a try. It might not sound great right out of the gate. Might not sound great right out of the gate. <laughs> However, I think if you invest some time in this, you'll start to see some other opportunities that you may have never seen before because you've never looked at the fretboard this way. You've never played the guitar this way. So give this a chance. It might be for you, it might not. But before you write it off, please, please just give it a shot. Okay, so we have all of these techniques. How do we combine them? Well, what I'd like you to try first, and I'm just gonna isolate two things here, is I want you to go ahead and fret that bass note with your picking hand. And then I want you to maintain that hammer on pull off by going under the fretboard, normal fretting position, and hammering into and out of uh, that first chord position, like so. And then slide it up two frets. can try that new chord position, that stacked position at the fifth fret. And then go back down. Okay, so that's just one way to combine the things. The more comfortable you get with this, the more you'll be able to do. Now, instead of uh, showing you all sorts of different combinations and go walking through each one, I'm just gonna play, play around a little bit with what you've learned so far so you can see how different pieces may work for you. But I encourage you, really, the final step of this is to combine and experiment, right? Combine these different techniques, be it the single bass note, be it the, the picking hand strum while fretting the bass note, be it the, the hammer-ons, be it the single note lines. Uh, so combine these different aspects as you get comfortable with each of them. I think you'll find uh, them potent by themselves, but as you combine them, you really start to explore a, a whole new world. What's that, what's that Disney movie, Aladdin, A Whole New World? 
They're riding around on the magic carpet. Anyways, no, maybe it's Little Mermaid. You know, I'm really not up to snuff on my Disney movies. Let me go ahead and show you what some of these techniques uh, sound like when they're combined. Okay, here goes nothing. Ultimately, I want you to build this step by step. That's why I showed you each technique solo by itself so that you can gain comfort with each and then start to add them together when you're feeling confident. I do hope you really enjoy this. Um, this was a kind of a very much out there technique that I wanted to share with you. You know, I've never, I've never taught this before. It's, it doesn't have this, this, um, a uh, widely known step-by-step -step approach, but I wanted to at least give you some steps to follow. So uh, in the comments below, let me know if you like this. Let me know if this is something you think you might use in the future. Let me know if by doing this lesson, you surprised yourself. I, I guess what I'm saying is in the comments below, let me know if you dug this or not. And if you didn't, that's okay. If you did, that's awesome. I'm just trying to gather some more information though so that I can do more of these technique tune-up type segments and uh, well, do techniques that you're interested in. So again, let me know in the comments below. Okay, well, as I'm talking here, I want you to go ahead and return your guitar to standard tuning because we're gonna have a look at what guitar lick the TAC family is working on today. It's a lick by the name of Trampoline Accident. Yeah, it, and, I, and I think it's because it involves a lot of bouncing and hammer-ons. I think that's why I, I named it that. But anyways, uh, get your guitar in standard tuning. We're going to have a look at this guitar lick. See, each day within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we focus on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Mondays is a technique challenge. Tuesdays is a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. Since it is t since it is t Tuesday, uh, the TAC fam is focusing on a guitar lick, and here's exactly what they're working on. Your Tuesday TAC guitar lick challenge is a wonderful lick in the key of D. It's a single string lick that involves a ton of hammer-ons and a ton of pull-offs, hence the name Trampoline Accident. I cannot wait to show this to you in a musical context, but first, here's how the lick sounds. As you can tell, it's rather bouncy, as its name indicates. Now, before I show this to you in context, I do want you to know, TAC fam, this is your guitar lick challenge for today. So to learn this, please log in, click Start Challenge, and boom, right away you'll go to the teaching video. Once you get it under your fingers, you can move to the play along video. Adjust the speed to one that's comfortable for you, and don't forget to click on that tab icon in the lower right hand corner. This will allow you to pull up the tab and learn directly from it in conjunction with the video. Okay, so this lick, how do you use it? Well, I think this lick, uh, I'll show it to you in two different uh, ways. Number one, I think it works great as a musical motif, meaning you can use this as a fill in between verses. You can also use this as just an interesting way to spice up a long duration of a D chord. Let's say you're hanging out on a D chord for four measures or so, maybe even longer in some cases. This is a great thing to throw in to break up the monotony of strumming and add some interest. It really hones in on the D string, so you're still getting that uh, uh, reference to the D note, to the D chord, but you're adding a little bit of spice. Here's how it would sound. I'm gonna do this in two different tempos. First, I'm gonna show it to you in a slow tempo over a flowery, I'll call it a flowery D chord. Then I'll show it to you in a little bit more of a fast tempo. So you can see how it kind of lands in each, uh, uh, um, in each musical realm, if you will. Okay, here's how it sounds.
So as you can tell, it's just a great way to break up some strumming over a D chord. Now, the other thing I wanna bring your attention to is the latter portion of that lick. It's just a quick little fill and one that I think you can, one that I think you can utilize pretty darn quickly because it leads you back to a D chord. So again, it's a great way to break up the strumming of a D chord, this kind of continuous strumming of a D chord, but it's less of a commitment because you're only using, I think, three quarters of a measure to use this fill. Now, the fill I'm talking about is, again, the, the latter half of this lick, the latter portion, the, por the part that sounds like this. <laughs> You still get wonderful bounce, but in a much shorter format, in a much shorter duration. So here's how that would sound while strumming a D chord. What I'll do is strum a D chord, go to that little fill, come back to a D chord, go to that little fill, so on and so forth. So you can kind of hear how it sounds uh, um, in, well, in a musical context, but hear how, how punchy it is, but also how great it is how great it is at separating uh, just a generally strummed D chord. Here's how it sounds. So there I even used it a couple times in a row. Again, it just breaks up that strumming and it's just a way to add a little bit of spice to your rhythm playing so it's not just so chord heavy. You throw a couple single notes in there and all of a sudden it really perks up your entire musical offering. Okay, uh, I hope you have a blast with that lick and there's one thing I wanna mention before we get back to the show. It's a very short phrase and one that I want you to really sink into. Progress is not a light switch. You don't all of a sudden turn on the progress, okay? There are things that help facilitate progress, the biggest one being a regular and consistent guitar routine, but even still, just because you commit to a regular and consistent guitar routine doesn't mean that progress all of a sudden comes because you've committed to a guitar routine. Progress is the result of small wins built up over time and your consistent guitar routine is what helps you accumulate those small wins. Think of it as a guitar savings account. You don't all of a sudden wake up one day and think, I'm gonna go on this elaborate half year vacation, and boom, just because you thought that, the money comes into your account. That's not how it works. You have to work, you have to build up your savings, then you can take that vacation. Well, if you bring that same philosophy into the guitar world to achieve that wonderful progress that you're working towards, that you're working to have day in and day out, you have to commit to a consistent guitar routine. You have to put in the work, but the work doesn't have to be work. In the case of guitar playing, it's rather fun because, well, you're playing the guitar. But what I'm saying is that your guitar routine leads to small wins every day. Those small wins add up to progress, fulfillment, and fun. So what I encourage you to do is not only, well, have a consistent guitar routine, but every now and then, look back. Look back six months. Look back a year to how far you've come over that time. It's really important, and I stress this so many times. You know, as guitar players, we always look at the next thing. We always look at the next thing we're trying to learn, the next goal we're trying to accomplish, and very seldom do we look back and see the progress we've actually achieved. So every now and then, in fact, now's a really good time since we're talking about it, think back to three months ago, think back to six months ago, think back to one year ago. How much better have you become at the guitar? How much progress have you truly achieved? because it's those small wins that add up that help you achieve that progress and you need to pat yourself on the back. You need to take time to reflect and acknowledge that, holy smokes, you are achieving progress. You are achieving those small wins day in and day out and that will ultimately lead to, again, continued progress and you achieving your goals. Do you ever feel like regardless of your good intentions, you still find it hard to play guitar regularly on a consistent basis? I know that that exact scenario plays out in many guitar geeks' lives. Well, TAC family member Mary G has a solution for you. A solution that will lead to a consistent guitar routine that is as regular as the rising and setting of the sun. 
it's actually pretty darn easy, and it manifests in a way that she thinks about playing guitar. You'll see what I mean. During the last Tony's Acoustic Challenge 90 Day Progress Party, I had the chance to chat with Mary about her guitar routine and how she maintains it. And as a matter of fact, she's able to maintain a consistent guitar routine despite having 10 kids, two of which still live at home, and a rather busy schedule. Here's what Mary had to say about her routine and how she maintains it. It's crucial. I've uh, desired to play for a long time. Years ago, my, mom, my mother bought me a guitar, but I have 10 kids. I, that was <laughs> not fitting in, you know, <laughs> at all. You know, so now I'm down to two, so I'm good, you know. They, <laughs> it's my turn, it's my turn. And I, I set a routine to, um, you know, even with doctor's appointments, I'm like, no, I'm busy right now. I, I have something going on at this time. I, I treat it like, you know, it's a job, you know, I gotta be there and, um, you know, try to hold it sacred just like you would anything else that's important. And I'm, I'm, I'm making achievements. I, I don't feel like I'm wasting my time and I enjoy it. I am actually enjoying playing the guitar, even though I'm can't really play a whole song yet. <laughs> so, but it's, it's getting me there. It's getting me there. Pretty staggeringly awesome stuff and, and pretty simple when you break it down. Think of your guitar playing as committed time, much as you would a doctor's appointment or a class that you plan to attend in person. Really awesome stuff to make your guitar routine ironclad when it comes to its regularity and, and really being exempt from distractions as much as you possibly can. So huge thanks to Mary G for that tip. Now let's go ahead and, oh gosh, we're gonna head to the Midwest. I think Ohio's in the Midwest. Is Ohio in the Midwest or is it East? I can never tell. Anyways, we're gonna head to Dover, Ohio and visit Kit Armstrong and check out his guitar signal. Yes, indeed, he has a guitar signal that he wants to share with you. Here's what he's got. On the floor, starting from the left, a 1930s Glee Club Parlor guitar, a Breedlove Pursuit Parlor EMH, a Spring Creek Sultry Taylor 410 CE, a Taylor T5 C2 Koa, did I mention the Taylor 410 CE? I lost my spot reading it. Uh, yeah, a Taylor 410 CE, a Taylor T5 C2 Koa, an Odessa 2712, a Kala Koa Ukulele, and an Alvarez RD8. In the chairs, from left to right, a Hyundai Superstrat, a Hofner 459 violin guitar, a travel guitar Escape EG1, a Delta King by Washburn, Oscar Schmidt OE30, sorry, a Delta King by Washburn, an Oscar Schmidt OE30, and on the wall from left to right, a Dan Electro 56 U2, a Fender American Deluxe 50th Anniversary Strat, a PRS SE Custom 24, and an Epiphone Banjo. Wow, Kit. Uh, fantastic guitar snow. I mean, so many guitars that I had a hard time keeping my place while reading what was in your guitar snow. I think that's a feat, and I think you should wear that as a badge of honor. It also shows my reading skills are suffering. Been reading a lot of kids' books lately, and the sentences are far shorter than the list of your guitars. I know, I'm just making excuses. Uh, thanks for, uh, thank you, Kit, for submitting your guitar snow. And if you're sitting at home watching the Acoustic Tuesday show saying, you know what? I wanna see my face on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I wanna see my guitar signal on the Acoustic Tuesday show. It's actually pretty darn easy to get featured and in getting featured, in following the steps to get featured, you actually end up supporting Guitars for Vets. Here's how you get featured on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I wanna to propose to you a win, win, win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar signal or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar signal shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar signal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. 
Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. Yeah, I want you to get your sunglasses, your sun hat, and probably some sunscreen as well. Probably SPF 50 or so, because today's acoustic news segment is, is hot. It's bright. It shines like the sun. First up is a new album from the band Hawktail. If you're unfamiliar, well, you need to get yourself familiar. Yes, indeed, Hawktail consists of Brittany Haas, Paul Cowart, Dominic Leslie, and Jordan Tice. They are, in my opinion, an acoustic supergroup, and they have a new album for you. It's entitled Place of Growth. It's an album you need to check out. In fact, let's go ahead and listen to a track off of it right now. Correction, correction, only a single track has been released. The full album is out in a mere 10 days. It comes out on August 20th, okay? Sorry, I had to, I got all excited. I guess in my mind, I was hoping that it was out already, but it does indeed come out August 12th, but you can pre-order it right now if you're chomping at the bit much like I am. Next up on my list is an update of sorts. Um, quite a while ago, I featured Rachel Rosencrantz, who is building a, an electric guitar out of mushrooms. Yes, she, she grew the mushrooms, she baked the mushrooms, and constructed an electric guitar around these mushrooms. Um, it's been quiet for some time. However, the prototype has been made. Yes, indeed, the Myco caster has been completed, and it's something you absolutely have to see. So uh, here are some pictures. In fact, I've also got a video for you as well that shows kind of the, the mushroom core, if you will. And let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, along with your sunscreen and your sunglasses and your sun hat, you're gonna need one of those space blankets for this next little news item uh, because it's awesome. Just plain awesome. Two of my favorite guitar players. Two, uh, two musicians whom I've been lucky enough to meet in person. Um, Molly Tuttle and Tommy Emanuel. Two of my favorites. Two f just phenomenal guitar players. Uh, they had a chance to jam together. And as you could probably imagine, it was awesome. But if you can't imagine it, let's go ahead and watch a clip of it right now. Let's go ahead and keep the awesomeness rolling. Uh, Billy Strings recently made a trip to Martin Guitar. Yes, he made a trip to the Martin Guitar Factory and the pictures are awesome and his description of it is even awesomer. More awesome? I like awesomer. It's probably not right, but I love it. Uh, le here's what he had to say about his trip. Thanks Martin Guitar for the amazing tour and for letting me play this sweet little guitar from 1837 and 
Kurt Cobain's D18. I thought that was incredible, and uh, by the looks of it, he had one hell of a trip to Martin Guitar. Um, being able to play Kurt Cobain's D18 is something that is on my bucket list for certain. Okay, next up, what do we have? Oh, we're gonna head over to Taylor Country. This is something that I'm just curious what your opinion is. I found this picture, uh, um, just surfing Instagram. It is a Koi Blue custom Taylor guitar. And essentially what I wanna know from you is, can you get behind a blue guitar? Or is this one not for you? No judgment here, let me know in the comments below. And I will say, I'll, I'll weigh in with my opinion. I think this blue sets off the Koa trim incredibly well. However, blue guitar is just not my jam. It's not my jam, but it could be yours. Either way, let me know in the comments below. And, uh, well, poof. next up is something I found from Carter Vintage Guitars and Matt from Mule Guitars sent it to me. Uh, it's, it's, I, I just, I don't really have words for it. I'm trying to find it here. I'm having a hard time finding it. But Ida May, which is, I, I believe, a band uh, from Nashville, maybe? I could be making that up. Nonetheless, they were at Carter Vintage Guitars. And the, the guitarist in the band plays a Mule Mavis. While this is not purely acoustic, I feel like this is music you need to know about. Uh, here is Ida May playing the tune Long Gone and Heartworn from their album Click Click Domino. Um, the guitar tone is awesome, and the vocals are in another world. They're in the stratosphere, they're in the whatever's above the stratosphere, they're out in space, they're incredible. Let's have a listen. Send this thirsty flames. Watch it shiver and shine Learn to burn together Like a whiskey chasing wine Long gone and have one Long gone and have one Long gone and have one Long gone and have I'm gonna turn up the heat yet another notch. Um, yeah, I, I, you, you might actually ditch the sunglasses at this point. You might need those special glasses that you can look at a solar eclipse with. That's how bright it's about to get. Uh, Tyler Robbins, a luthier, a Michigan-based luthier, created what I think is one of the most captivating, beautiful, offset, asymmetrical rosettes on an acoustic guitar that I have ever seen. Here it is, um, and the, the, the caption of the, of the uh, post simply says this, a Chechen R.2 in the works. Loving the black and gray resin on this one. Check out Cam's work and you'll probably see why we chose this design scheme. This is going to Cam, who I think is a tattoo artist, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Cam is a tattoo artist ordering this guitar. So Tyler is making this guitar for Cam. Just want to be clear on that. And um, wow, uh, as soon as I saw this rosette, I was like, first of all, how does one envision this? How does one see this on a guitar? I just, I love it. I think it's beautiful. And not to mention, the rosette is awesome. The back inlay kind of gives a nod to the design of the rosette as well. The back inlay is Gorgeous. The back of the guitar, the wood is gorgeous. Uh, I believe it's Chechen, ju uh, judging by the description. And just wow, just wow, just wow. Uh, Tyler, thank you for sharing your skills with the world and thank you for posting these pictures. This is something that I think is just jaw dropping, just, just purely jaw dropping. I've got one more news item for you. It's an update on the bug guitar. What the hell is the bug guitar? Well, uh, just, was it last episode? Two episodes ago, I featured a guitar that came into National Guitars for repair. And on a metal body resonator, what connects the neck to the guitar is a piece of wood on the inside. Well, this guitar was from 1933, 1930, somewhere in there. And termites had gotten in the body of the guitar and found their home in this wooden stick that connects the neck 
to the guitar. Well, needless to say, the wood was completely rotted out and National has repaired this guitar, put a new neck on it, and uh, I don't know if they exterminated the termites, probably, they probably called the Orkin Man, got the termites out of there, put a new neck on the guitar. It looks awesome and I just wanted to share it with you because not only is it cool that they restored this guitar, but the body of the guitar is just, it's got the mojo. It's got the scratches, it's got the age, it's got the patina. If this guitar could talk, my oh my, the stories it would tell. Okay, on those uh, buggy notes, on those, uh, <laughs> on those termite notes. I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And since we learned two-hand tapping today on today's show, I thought, you know, next week's show should involve some sort of two-hand tapping follow-up. So next week, I'll be sharing with you who I think, whom I think are the 10 best active modern fingerstyle guitarists today. Yes, if you dig this modern fingerstyle guitar approach, if you dig two hand tapping, if it's brand new to you, next week's show is a must watch because you'll see 10 artists who will expose you even further to the wild array of techniques when it comes to modern fingerstyle guitar. That's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday, well, yeah, you guessed it, every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. right here on YouTube. And before I let you go, please do remember this. Your guitar success, no matter how you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for sharing your time with me. And of course, thank you for being a guitar geek. Thank you so much, a lot of thank yous. I just got stuck on a thank you loop. I I think it's because of the caffeine that I have ingested. And uh, with all that being said, with all those thanks being expressed, uh, cheers to you. Cheers to being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers again. Be nice and play guitar.